Section 2.1, Graphical Summaries for Qualitative Data. Frequency distributions. The frequency of a category is the number of times it occurs in the data set. A frequency distribution is a table that presents the frequency for each category. As an example, a retailer accepts four types of credit cards and lists the types used by the last 50 customers as follows. So 50 people went in and they used these different types of credit cards. The frequency distribution presents the frequencies for each type of credit card. So for instance, they used MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and Discover. So if you go back and look at the frequency distribution, uh, they're just adding up how many MasterCards there were and how many Visas, how many American Express, etc., etc. And they come up with there are 11 people that use MasterCard, 23 people that used Visa, 9 people that used American Express, and 7 people that used Discover. A frequency distribution displays how many observances or observations are in each category. Sometimes we are interested in the proportion of observations in each category. The proportion of observations in a category is called the relative frequency of the category. The relative frequency of a category is the frequency of the category divided by the sum of all frequencies. So the relative frequency is found by taking the number of how many people had the MasterCard, for example, and then dividing it by the total number of uh, people that actually did use credit cards. And you would do that for each one. So on the next slide, that's what they do. They take the total, which is 50, so they add them all up, 11, 23, 9, and 7, and those numbers again come from here, 11, 23, 9, and 7, that's the total. Then they take 11 divided by 50 and they get 0.22. Notice this is uh, as a decimal number. 23 divided by 50 is 0.46. 9 divided by 50 is 0.18. And 7 divided by 50 is 0.14. Those are the relative frequency. Notice they have three columns. They name one as the type of credit card. They name one as the frequency, and they have the third column as the relative frequency. A bar graph is a graphical representation of a frequency distribution. A bar graph consists of rectangles of equal width <clears throat> with one rectangle for each category. The height of the rectangles represent the frequencies or relative frequencies of the categories. Following are the frequency and relative frequency bar graphs for the credit card data. Notice on the left, we have the frequency column with the blue picture and the relative frequency column with the purple picture. Uh, over here on the bottom, which would be normally the x-axis, we have MasterCard, Visa, American Express, Discover. Notice the amount of people that used uh, the MasterCard was 11. Uh, for Visa, it was 23. For American Express, is 9. And for Discover, is 7. Notice how the two pictures look exactly the same, and that is because we're using the relative frequency, and they're relative with respect to each other. So notice the heights on the y-axis is in terms of the relative frequency, and for MasterCard, you go up to 0.22. Again, this is an approximation. Visa goes up to 0.46, American Express 0.18, and Discover is 0.14. <clears throat> a Pareto chart. Sometimes it is desirable to construct a bar graph in which the categories are presented in order of frequency or relative frequency. Such a graph is called a Pareto chart. These charts are useful when it is important to see clearly which are the most frequently occurring categories. So pretty much it goes down. You got the 23, height, 11, 9, and 7, so they're in order of most to least. Horizontal bars. The bars in the graph or in the bar graph may be either horizontal or vertical. Horizontal bars are sometimes more convenient when the categories have long names. 
Uh, this happens to be employment of the U.S. residents in farming, forestry, manufacturing, uh, managerial, sales and office, other services. So it's just a bar graph. It's just going sideways. So here, this is in relative frequency. Notice the numbers are uh, decimal numbers. And again, it's just plotted how far out it goes. Side-by-side -side graphs, sometimes they want to compare two bar graphs that have the same categories. The best way to do this is to construct both bar graphs on the same axes, putting bars that correspond to the same category next to each other. This is called a side-by-side -side bar graph. Notice that we have a title, monthly active users. Um, down here on the x-axis is Facebook, Gmail, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. And we have the dates, 2015, 2016. This is in frequency, in millions. So every one of these number is millions. So 200 million, 400 million, 600 million. And uh, notice that we're running them side by side. So we have 2015 data for Facebook, 2016 data. So as you can see, you can quickly compare uh, from year to year for each of the categories. A pie chart is an alternative to a bar graph for displaying relative frequency information. A pie chart is a circle which is divided into sectors, one for each category. The relative sizes of the sectors match the relative frequencies of the categories. For example, if a category has a relative frequency of 0.25, then its sector takes up 25% of the circle. Notice 0.25 multiplied by 100 is 25%. Following is a pie chart for the credit card example at the beginning of the section. So the relative frequency is 0.22 for MasterCard, and here we have MasterCard at 22%. So it's a quick conversion of multiplying by 100 to go from relative frequency to uh, pie chart representation. So if you were given a pie chart, a pie chart with these percentages, uh, like Visa is 46%, and you were asked, well, what is the relative frequency? You would be able to look at this pie chart and divide by 100. So you would say 46, or 46 divided by 100 would give me the 0.46. So you can go from relative frequency to the pie chart data or from the pie chart data back to the relative frequency.